completing the square. Why do we care about completing the square? Well, uh, the thing is, is this. We would really love it if every single quadratic equation that we ran across was solvable um, by factoring. It'd be, it'd be really kind of the easiest way. Um, so let me see if I can come up with uh, an equation that's good. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but um, we get negative 6 here. Um, we do 5 and 1, uh, negative 5, negative 1. Ooh, this might actually work. So I think what happens here is <clears throat> we, get, uh, we factor this and we get x uh, minus 5 times x minus 1 are the factors and it makes it really easy to solve this equation so so now we know that our uh, our solutions are going to be x equals 5 and 1 and we're done yay if only all quadratic equations were that simple unfortunately they're not let's let's take a look at a contrasting example what if the equation was slightly different and instead of x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0, what if it was x squared plus 6x uh, minus 3 equals 0? Well here, um, try as hard as you may, you're just not going to be able to factor this guy. Um, negative 6 goes here, negative 3 goes here, and, uh, and really there are no two numbers that multiply together to get me negative 3 that add up to negative 6. So I'm going to have to scratch that. I'm going to have to say goodbye to this guy. Sorry. Um, but, uh, but hey, have no fear. We do have an option. It's called completing the square. Now, uh, something that you might recall from, uh, uh, th there is another way to solve quadratic equations, and that is by using the square root method. Check this out. Um, if we have something like x squared and it equals 13 and we want to solve, we just go like this. We just go uh, take the square root of this side, take the square root of this side. Don't forget the plus or minus. And, uh, and then we discover that the result is x equals plus or minus square root of 13. Two separate solutions that we find by using the square root. And uh, it turns out we could expand that if we wanted to. We could also go and, and do have something like this. If we had x uh, minus 1 squared and it was equal to 7, well, we could take the square root of that baby on each side. And when we do, and again, don't forget the plus or minus, uh, when we do, we could just get x minus 1 equals plus or minus root 7 and therefore we could solve quite easily um, 1 plus or minus root 7 yay so what we'd really like is we'd like to have this ability to take the square root in order to solve well uh, we can if we have something that looks like this x squared um, plus uh, 2x plus 1 uh, and and that if we factored that that looks like x plus 1 squared. So, so it, by the way, there's a special name for this guy. This guy right here is called a perfect square trinomial. And the reason why we call it a perfect square trinomial, and it's worth writing down, is, let me see if I can get this for you, The reason we call it a perfect square trinomial is because this is essentially a perfect square. This is x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's what it is. <clears throat> All right, so let's get back to our x squared minus 6x minus 3 and see what we can do. With this guy, it'd be so nice if we didn't have this minus 3 here. So I'm going to move it to the other side. I'm going to take that negative 3, add, it, add 3 to both sides, so I get 3 over here. And where the three, negative 3 was, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little placeholder. I'm going to say plus whatever, I'm leaving room for something. And, uh, and over here, to, to balance out the equation, whatever I add to the left side of the equation, I'll have to add to the right side of the equation as well, so I'm preparing myself in advance. Now, the number that I put in here, uh, there's a little special formula that seems to work every single time. And what you do is you take this middle number, and you divide it by 2, 
and then you square it. And when you do that, the number that you get goes right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put here, this is uh, 3 squared is 9. So I'll also put a 9 over here. And supposedly now, if this formula works, um, what happens is this should be a perfect square trinomial. Uh, I'll, I'll circle it so you can see what I mean. Um, this guy right here should be a perfect square trinomial. Okay, now that's, that's the hope. So let's see if it worked out that way. So what I do now is I say, well, can I factor this? Uh, and I think I can. I think it's x minus 3 times x minus 3, also known as x minus 3 squared. You can double check and make sure I did that correctly. And then that's equal to 3 plus 9, so that's 12. And now look at this, looky here, looky loo. Um, we can now go ahead and take the square root of, of one side of the equation to get rid of this, uh, to get rid of this square. And we'll take this, we'll square root the other side because whatever we do to one side, we got to do to the other side. Um, and don't forget when we do take the square root of this side, we'll do plus or minus. And, uh, and then uh, we can go ahead and say, well, it must be x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 12. And hopefully those of you who are good at simplifying radicals, you'll convert that into, I think that turns out to be 2 root 3. So then finally we'll add 3 to both sides to get x all by itself. And we get x equals 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. 3, yippee, yahoo, the miracle of completing the square lets us solve an equation uh, even though uh, we, we, we didn't have a perfect square trinomial. We make one up. Oh, that's just so wonderful. Now, some of you might be wondering, how did I figure out the 6 divided by 2 squared thing? So I'll, I'll, go, I'll briefly go through and I'll show you how to generalize how to take something like x squared minus 6x and convert it into something like x minus 3 squared um, using this knowledge right here. Let's take a look. You might recall that the general form of a quadratic equation is something like ax squared plus bx plus c um, equals something. Well, well, for now, I'll say 0. Um, and uh, uh, the, the only thing is, is when we're completing the square, the easiest way to complete the square is not to have an a there at all. So if you don't mind, I'm going to show you this formula with the a missing. We'll, we'll, we'll consider the a to be 1. So I'm really going to write this out as, uh, as x squared plus bx plus c. Um, and then uh, I'd like to go ahead and make this into a perfect square trinomial. In order for it to be a perfect square trinomial, this C has to be look like something. And here's what it needs to look like. Um, we take the B and we divide it by 2, whatever B is, and then we square it. And then if we set C equal to that, if we go ahead and make C into b divided by 2 squared, we'll have a perfect square trinomial. And, uh, and ultimately that will mean that we end up with something like x uh, minus b divided by 2 squared. Now I know that for some of you this generalizing with just using algebra and letters is not necessarily helping. So let's try it with an example with numbers, sort of like the first example we started with. Let's, let's just take something like x squared. Um, let's try, I could be plus 10x or it could be minus 10x, doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, for now, let's assume we don't have a c in there. Uh, we'll go ahead and divide 10 by 2. That gets me 5. And then we'll square it. That gets me 25. And just in case you are watching and, and you're, not, uh, you're, you're not able to listen, um, we take this guy and we do 10 divided by 2 squared. And that's how we get this guy right there. And then, if all worked out properly, what we expect is, is that this should be a perfect square trinomial. And so it should be x plus uh, b, uh, ooh, plus, maybe plus, plus, let's get that right, um, b divided by 2, um, in this case 10 divided by 2. And then, we, and then we say that squared. So the question is, did that really work? Well, let's take a look. Uh, if we simplify this, it's really x plus 
5 squared. And is that the same as x squared plus 10x plus 25? I believe it is, but let's just double check. Um, we FOIL x plus 5 times x plus 5, and that gets us x squared plus 5x plus 5 more x plus 25. So 5x plus 5x is 10x plus 25. Sure enough, check that gets us the what what we that gets us our perfect square trinomial so so this guy here must be x plus 5 squared and we got it by taking 10 dividing by 2 and squaring and making that into our c all right um, you have some more videos to take a look at with more examples but i wanted to at least give you an introduction